Hi, so yeah, welcome to this channel once again. This is a series on atomic structure and quantum numbers, and today we'll be diving deeper into this topic by solving practice questions. And it's actually fine if you feel overwhelmed or confused by questions on this topic, but I can assure you you are in the right place. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to confidently tackle questions on this topic, A level or O level. So before we get into the video, I have a gift for you at the end of the video. That's a link to a quiz. I prepared for you that you can take in your leisure time. So having said that, let's get our pen and our book and get into the world of chemistry. Alright, so let's look at the first question. So the questions are actually divided into O level and A level. And the first question here says, which of the following statements at about atomic structure is correct? It says electrons are found in the nucleus. B says protons have a negative charge. C says neutrons have no charge. D says electrons have a positive charge. So in the previous videos, I told you that electrons are negatively charged particles that revolve around the nucleus. And what is in the nucleus? The nucleus is composed of two things, the protons and the neutrons. The protons are positively charged and the neutrons have no charge. They have no charge, hence the name neutrons, neutral. But the protons are the neutrons are much more heavier than the electrons. So take note of that. So having said that, the answer to this question is option C. Neutrons have no charge. So number two, what is the maximum number of electrons the second energy level has? So the maximum number of electrons the second energy level has, or the maximum number of electrons an energy level has can actually be found by a formula and that formula is known as 2n squared it's 2n squared and using the formula 2n squared where n is the principal quantum number we said that in the last video you can actually get the link to the last video here and you can watch that for better knowledge so um using the formula 2n squared that will be 2 into bracket 2 squared that will be 2 times 4 and that is it so making the correct answer option B. So option B is correct. It. So let's go to question three. All right. So now the next question is actually question three, and question three says, "What quantum number determines the shape of an orbital?" A says the principal quantum number. B says subsidiary. C magnetic and D spin. I already gave you the acronym PAMS, but here A here is not azimuthal but subsidiary. I told you um, azimuthal quantum number has several names. You can call it azimuthal, subsidiary, Sommerfeld, and, and Sommerfeld quantum number. So the quantum number that actually tells us the shape of orbitals is actually the azimuthal or subsidiary quantum number. It tells us the shape of orbitals. For example, it says the S orbital is spherical in shape, the P orbital is dumbbell, the D orbital is double dumbbell and the F orbital is complex in shape. So the right answer here is option B, that is subsidiary quantum number. So number four says for an electron in an for an electron in a 3D orbital, what are the possible values of the magnetic quantum number? And that is M sub L. Alright, so knowing that this 3D orbital is a part of the D sub shell, so that means that it has an azimuthal quantum number value of 2. So that means that the possible values range from minus L to plus L and L is 2. So that's minus 2 to plus 2. So the numbers that range from minus 2 to plus 2 are minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1 and plus 2. So leaving our answer as option B. Alright, so let's look at this question and this is question number 5. Which of the following sets of quantum numbers is not possible? So all are possible except for one option. So N, L, M, L, M, M, S, which is actually M sub L and M sub S, are actually the principal azimuthal magnetic and spin quantum numbers respectively. So this here is an int for this question. The value of L will always be less than the value of N. The value of L will always be less than the value of N. And there's this formula, formula you can go with. L, that's the azimuthal quantum number, ranges from 0 to N minus 1. That means if the, azimuthal, if the principal quantum number N is 2, 
azimutal quantum number can range from 0 to 2 minus 1, that's 0 to 1. That means it can either be 0 or 1. And another thing you should notice is that m sub s, that's the spin quantum number, the value is always plus or minus half. It can be together or it can be separate. That is, it can be plus half or either minus half. Or you can put it together as plus or minus half. So having known that, let's look at this question. Alright, so just to go straight to the point, option D here is the correct answer. Remember I said that N L values must always be less than N values. So here in option D, 3 is not less than the 3 for the principal quantum number. So the only values we can have for the azimuthal quantum number, if the principal quantum number is 3 as in option D, can only be 0 to 3 minus 1, that's 0 to 2. So it can either be 0, 1 or 2. So 3 here is not possible. So the answer here is option D. If you look at other options A to C, you see that they conform to the two hints I gave you previously. So let's move to the next question. All right, guys. So the first question here says, which is the A-level question, it says, which of the following orbitals has the highest multi-electron atom? The highest multi-electron atom from the name that has many electrons in the atom. So how to know the um, orbital here that has the highest multi-electron atom is by adding the principal quantum number, which is N, plus the azimuthal quantum number, which is L. And the one that gives us the highest value is our answer. So the principal quantum number is always the number at the front. So for 3s, the principal quantum number is 3. Now, um, I gave you a, a table in the last um, video I made. Now, I gave you a table in the last video I made. I said these are the following values for the azimuthal quantum number for each orbital or for each subshell. For the s, it's 1. It's zero rather for the P one for the D two and for the F is three and this is because of the azimuthal quantum number L is equals to n minus one one value less than the principal quantum number and we find the S shell we I find the S first S subshell in the first shell that's 1 minus 1, that's 0. We find the first piece of shell in the second shell. That's 2 minus 1, 1. And for others, um, for the last one, you find the first F sub shell in the fourth shell. That's 4 minus 1, 3. That's how we got that. So now, now we add. So when we add 3 plus 0, for 3F, three, 3 plus 0 still gives us 0. So this is 0. For option A, option B to be 3 plus 1, and that will be 4. So option B is 4. For option C, that's 3 plus 2, that's 5. And option D, 4 plus 0, that's still 4. So the one with the highest number or the highest value here is option C, which is 5. And this is why the energy of um, option C is actually greater than the energy of option D. That's why you see 4S come usually before 3D. Alright, so our answer here is option C. Alright, so the next question here, question 7 says, what is the total number of orbitals in the third shell? That is the shell with the energy level or principal quantum number N equals to 3. So the total number of orbitals is you can actually get it from a formula and that formula is n squared. It's a very easy formula, n squared. So you can use that to get the total number of orbitals. So don't forget the total number the orbitals are the boxes, the small boxes in the subshell. So let's say we have a 2p subshell. So under this 2p subshell we have three boxes. So 
this one box these three boxes each are called the orbitals and this is 2px 2py and 2pz orbitals so these three each of them are orbitals on their own so knowing that the principal contour number is three the answer will be equals to three squared and that is equals to nine so answer here is still option c it seems option c is becoming more of our answers all right so let's move to the next question all right so the next question here is question eight and it says an electron in an atom is described by the quantum numbers n equals four l equals two m sub l equals minus one which which type of orbital is this electron in so to know the type of orbital this electron is in the question is basically asking what what subshell um i see most questions trying to um trying to interchange subshells in and orbitals together but like orbitals are actually like subset of subshells you are inside like the like in the last question i just showed you so orbitals are actually subset inside of subshells all right so to know where it belongs to so as i said earlier for in for example option a 4s the 4 there is the principal quantum number and that's the value for the n so when we know that the value for example the value for the n is 4 so we know that it must start from 4 so none of the all of the options start from 4 l there is 2 so we know that and according to the table i gave you the azimuthal value for each of these subshells i gave it to be 0 1 2 and 3 for s p d and f respectively so the one that the azimuthal quantum number value is 2 is the d subshell so that means this is in the 4d subshell all right so our answer is automatically option c all right so the next question here is question nine and it says which of the following statement is true about the police exclusion principle so this is a teaser for the next video i'm going to be making on the horns rule police exclusion principle and the half bow principle so watch out for that video and subscribe if you have not and turn on the notification bell to get a notification when i release the video so let's go into the question police exclusion principle is a principle actually stating that there are no two electrons in an atom that can have the same value for all the possible four quantum numbers it's not possible for an electron to have for two electrons in the same atom for example a sodium atom to have the same value for the principal quantum number n for the azimuthal for the magnetic and for the spin so our answer here from the definition i just gave is option a so the last question here is question 10 and it says if the spin quantum number m sub s could have three values instead of two values how many electrons could the shell hold so if it could have three values that means that in a single orbital instead of having two electrons one moving clockwise and one moving as clockwise we are now having we are now having three like this like this and like this so now how many electrons could the second shell hold so i already told you that um each electron normally contains two each orbital normally contains two electrons now if each orbital contains three electrons how many electrons would the second shell hold so the first thing we have to do is to find the number of orbitals in the second shell so the second shell has a principal quantum number n is equals to two and to find the number of orbitals i already told you the formula is n squared so that will be two squared and that is equals to four so there are four orbitals in the second shell now if four orbitals were to contain if each orbital were to contain three electrons how many electrons would there be in the second shell in total that would be four times three and that would be equals to 12. 
so the correct answer here is option b and that is top so i've come to the end of this video don't forget to like and subscribe and watch out for more videos like this there is a link in the description below to a quiz question that i promised you earlier in the beginning of the video you can check the link it's a link to a google drive and attempt the quiz and let me know what you had all right guys thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye